Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. A Midwestern town in America, Raccoon City. A solitary island far off in the sea, Rockfort Island. An island that would become the second Raccoon City, Sheena Island. There are still many unanswered questions about these seemingly unrelated yet intensely traumatic events. Though it is believed that the International Enterprise umbrella was somehow involved, little is known as to the origin of this faceless corporation. When was it established? By whom? And how was the T-Virus created? To uncover the truth, we must delve deeper into the events which transpired in the beginning, before the mansion incident. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of Nemeseek. And today we are actually going to talk about comic books. Uh, specifically, this Resident Evil comic book from Marvel, which was given away as a promotional item back when the first video game came out, uh, with art on the cover by the amazing and very talented Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, who I'm a huge, huge fan of his work. And so I figured, you know, while I was looking around for Resident Evil stuff to make videos on, I figured, why not just do comic books? I think there's a there's not a lot of channels out there that cover the Resident Evil extended universe. Most people just focus on the games, because that's, you know, the main lore and stuff. And that's great, but since they kind of, you know, other people are already tackling that and doing great jobs at it, I figured I would start, you know, focusing on the comic books. I think Score PN, I think is his name or his channel name. He's the only person I think I've ever come across. I haven't seen a ton of his videos, but I've seen a few and he's covered some of the comic books and manguas and extended universe stuff. And I was like, well, good. There's not a lot of people out there covering this. And I know the people on my channel tend to come here for comic book stuff. So let's dive into some Resident Evil comics because Marvel Comics actually put out the first Resident Evil book here. Number one, again, it was free. It was promotional material. I think if you got it at like an EB Games or something, if you pre-ordered uh, the game, which I have right here, uh, you know, and I have uh, the first copy. I have a pre-owned copy, though, back, way back when I bought this at, like, an electronic boutique or something um, with, you know, has the same cover by Bill Sienkiewicz. And uh, this is awesome. This is really cool. It's a prequel comic book that kind of sets up the first video game. Um, I will admit that some of the dialogue's kind of goofy, but it's a really nice introduction to the characters, and it gives you a little backstory on each member of the Stars team. And it also focuses on Richard Aiken, who was a member of the you know Bravo team that got sent in first. So if you're not familiar with Resident Evil, you know we're going to talk about the story in this episode. You're going to kind of figure out what's going on. began as a simple investigation of some bizarre murders in the suburbs of Raccoon City. Nothing in our training could ever have prepared us for the nightmare that ensued. We never stood a chance. What's going on? Engine failure. Emergency landing. Check the current position and investigate the surrounding area. Um, so we start off, and it has Richard Aiken here. Uh, you know, he's at the, the mansion. And he's trying to get his uh, his radio to work. And he's like that he took out of the helicopter. And he's like, come on, come on, you know, like someone please answer me, answer me. And uh, and he, you know, no one's answering. And he's like, I saw Becky, you know, who is Rebecca Chambers. He's like, I saw her run ahead of me. And I know she's in the mansion somewhere. I'm looking for her. And he goes, so I'm here now. And he goes, but I think I might be the only other survivor besides her. He's like Kevin Dewey or, or Dewey, the guy who's like the pilot. Um, he was uh, ripped apart by something. We don't know what. So please someone answer me. And of course no one is. Uh, so then he gets 
gets into it with the uh, zombies and he realizes that the wire on his uh, transmitter is cut or, or got damaged on his run into the mansion. So he spends pretty much the whole rest of the issue trying to uh, fix it. And meanwhile, we see Wesker here and right off the bat, you find out this is kind of a spoiler. You find out that Wesker is kind of the villain. Uh, so real quick backstory, uh, Resident Evil, obviously uh, the game, it takes place in 1998, if you're not familiar with that. And it's in a town called Raccoon City. And during, you know, the events of Raccoon City, there's been some murders. And actually, you know what? I have the intro to the video game. Let's play that real quick so you can kind of get caught up on everything that's going on. And then we'll come right back to this moment here. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their Seriously, mission. Have found it yet? Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. All right, welcome back. So now that you kind of know what's going on, you have a, like a predator type opening, the stars alpha team, who they're called alpha, but they weren't sent in first, but they're supposed to be sent in first. Uh, instead, Wesker sent the Bravo team in, and you're going to learn why in this book, basically, uh, because it turns out they're a little bit more green. There's more new members, according to this comic, uh, in the you know Bra Bravo team. So they wanted to go in, they wanted to prove themselves, and he sent them in. So there's been bizarre murders happening, uh, victims apparently eaten, and there's all these rumors that maybe it's, you know, monsters, and of course people are like, no, that's ridiculous, we don't live in a world of monsters, and little do they know that they're about to find out that they do, um, and, you know, and so they think it might be a cult of potential cannibals, and that's why stars, like the local police have been involved, but they haven't been able to solve anything, so they're sending in the, the stars team, and the stars team, you know, consists of Wesker, uh, Chris Red Phil, Barry Burton, uh, Jill Valentine, uh, Joseph Frost, and also um, there. Oh, I think I said Barry. Oh, and Brad Vickers, the pilot. So we're going to learn all about all of them here in a second. That's the Alpha Team. So this book, like I said, kind of focuses on the Bravo Team, which is Enrico, and you have um, Richard, and you have Rebecca, and uh, Joseph. Uh, no, I think uh, oh, Forrest Speyer. He's the team sniper, um, and then also Kenneth, who's like a, one of the. He's like the medic of the team. So. Wesker here, he's talking to someone at Umbrella. You can tell by their little cup here that says UMB on it with an Umbrella logo. Uh, kind of an Umbrella logo, like an actual Umbrella logo, not the company logo. Um, so I don't know if they weren't allowed to use that or if this was just like a cutesy mug that they sell in gift shops or something to promote Umbrella. But it's a guy named Holden, uh, and, and Wesker says his name. He's like, Holden? He's like, yeah, uh, you know, Holden's like, hey, what's going on? You know, we heard about the murders. Is everything all right? And he's like, yeah, I sent in the Bravo team. And this guy's like, why didn't you go in yourself? And he's like, trust me, I have a plan. And he's like, and he's like okay, Wesker, I'll, you know, get back to me as soon as possible. We're going to learn, of course, that Wesker, and as you learn in the game, Wesker does have his own plan. He is not really going along with the agenda of Umbrella. He's actually betraying Umbrella as well as betraying the Stars team. So he's captain of the Stars. He used to work for Umbrella, and you see some of our history. If you watch some of our history of Resident Evil videos, you know he has a history with uh, Umbrella and where he comes from, uh, a project called Project W. And, uh, and now he's like the, the prodigal child of Project W, and he's moved up as a scientist, and then now is the leader of this STARS team, and he has it, he put it together basically to, uh, you know, for a means to an end. He was eventually going to test them against his, the bioorganic weapons from Umbrella, but uh, this outbreak has kind of sped up his plan. So that's what we're learning here. And then Barry comes in and the two of them are talking. Uh, we don't get the setup. I mean, we get a little bit of time where maybe Barry and him had some moments together because obviously we know Barry ends up uh, betraying stars as well, working with them, uh, with Wesker. But f we find out why. We fr find out that Barry didn't really have a choice. He was kind of being blackmailed. Uh, but that doesn't really play out here. This is just them talking. And then they walk down the, the star's office, I guess. Uh, this is the police department. Um, 
of course, a lot of when this comic came out, a lot of Resident Evil 2 was not planned or anything like that. Uh, so when he kicks in the door, everyone's sleeping in bunks. And he's like, all right, everyone, get up. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, when I was reading this, I was like, wait, why are they in bunks? Like, obviously, it, I know the world of Resident Evil, uh, you know, now, post to Resident Evil 2. And there aren't bunks and beds. I mean, there was a couple uh, downstairs in the stars in the uh, police department. So maybe they're in that area. Because if you remember, even in the remake, they put the the bunk beds in there. So I guess it's possible that these guys, you know, have like a night shift and they're sleeping like firemen or something. Um, I guess that's possible. But uh, it just kind of seems silly to think about. Uh, but anyway, so then we cut back to Richard and he's trying to go to the mansion. He sets off the nerve gas on one of the puzzles. Um, and so he, you know, he's freaking out about that and he's still trying to find Rebecca and uh, stay away from the zombies and then meanwhile this is where we get our introduction to the team we have chris redfield former air force pilot dismissed for insubordination a renegade but a great thinker and expert marksman uh, barry gave him a chance with the team and hasn't uh, regretted it for a minute so we find out that chris he's smoking a cigarette there because that's what the live action actor did in the original video game uh but it's weird to see chris with a cigarette <laughs> especially in resident Evil 5 he's so big he looks more of like a cigar guy uh but maybe he you know changes to cigars later but anyway so chris he's like a 22 year old guy but he was dismissed from the army uh, or the Air Force, I'm sorry, uh, you know, he was a pilot but uh, and a great marksman, but he was dismissed for insubordination. So that kind of plays into his character. Maybe his, uh, you know, commanding officer in the Air Force also gave him an order that he didn't want to take because that's what happens in this with Wesker. Like he kind of, you know, is, he does the right thing as opposed to, what you know, what Wesker does. So so that's kind of neat little background on Chris Redfield there. Uh, Joseph Ross, he's a vehicle specialist, young, um, curious, and very enthusiastic, newest member of the team. Uh, who also he gets killed uh, first, as we see in the opening cutscene. Uh, Brad Vickers, nicknamed Chicken Heart by his friends and co workers or his peers, takes a lot of heat from the team for his timid attitude towards danger. Hell of a pilot, though. And then we have Jill Valentine here, demolitions expert, which now that makes sense because uh, I, I remember, I think recently on a live stream or one somewhere, I was reading her bio for Resident Evil 3, and they called her a demolition expert, or like an explosive expert. And I was kind of like, where does that come from? It looks like that's always kind of been part of her background, which I, you know, I guess I just slipped my mind. So it was cool to reread that here. And uh, it says, key, mer key member of the team and a woman with a strong will. Uh, and then obviously Barry Burton here. And Barry Burton's like their weapons expert. Uh, he's the one who gets some of their weapons custom made, and he gets help from a local gun shop called Kendo. Uh, who shows up in Resident Evil 2 and might show up also in Resident Evil 3, apparently. So uh, the remakes, at least, and the original for Resident Evil 2. So, uh, yeah, this is cool stuff and setting up the world. Jill starts to figure out, because she's not stupid. She's uh, She she is kind of, they kind of mention that she's kind of the brains of the team, too, or common sense person. She knows Wesker's hiding something. She already can tell. Like, he's, he's like, yeah, all these reports you guys heard of monsters and cannibals, that's bull crap. We're going to go in. We're going to find our team. They just had, you know, some malfunctioning with their helicopter. That's all it is. We're going to go find them. We're going to bring them back. That's what it is. Like, it's something simple. I, I promise you, we live in Raccoon City. It's it's not, you know, it's not monsters. And it turns out, of course, it is. And Jill's starting to figure out, because Wesker's saying so many times, it's not monsters. It's going to be fine. She's starting to doubt it big time because she's like, yeah, I feel like we're being sold on a lie here. And so she's starting to put two and two together. Uh, then meanwhile, we go back to Richard and this leads up right to where he is in the game almost, uh, which is where he gets the encounter. Like he's in the attic and he's trying to get up to one of the windows. He's pushing boxes around trying to get up to one of the windows to get out of the mansion. And that's when the snake shows up. Uh, the Yawn is the name of the, the giant mutated snake. So and that's the last time we see of Richard in this comic. And of course, knowing the video game, you're going to know where that ends up with him. And then here we go again with uh, the team uh, talking on the helicopter. Barry showing a little bit of optimism, but again, hiding something. Something It looked like Wesker has already gotten to him by this point, and uh, he may already be uh, participating in Wesker's plan and trying to deter the others uh, you know, from, from thinking of the dangers that are coming. So it looks like what, even Barry might be in on it now, uh, unfortunately. Because you know, we know Barry's a good guy, and we, he is a family man, and they mentioned that at the beginning. So that's what Wesker uses against him. He says, look, if you don't help me, uh, the agents I have outside your house right now are going to kill your family and your daughters. And uh, of course, we find out that's not true, which is bullcrap. And uh, but, you know, we, Barry doesn't know that at the moment. So so Barry's playing along. Uh, and then meanwhile, Brad's like, hey, I found the you know, Bravo team helicopter. Let's uh, drop you guys in. And of course, Chris is like, you know, has a smart 
while he comments or he, he thinks about it. he doesn't say it out loud but he's like yeah don't worry brad we're, we're the fighters here we'll, we'll take care of it you just fly your helicopter your little helicopter so chris is a little bit of a d-bag there by saying stuff like that uh but then they come in they don't see the uh, you know dogs the mutated dogs the cerberuses they don't see those off in the distance and they come down and they're jumping down to uh, jump into action and check out the helicopter that seemingly crashed of their compatriots and thus the video game begins this way. And this was plotted out by Desmond Church and Chris Kramer, and the script was by Dan Shaheen, Chris Kramer, and Simone Sadu. And then also the art and color was by Dave Johnson. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Great team that put this book together. A couple familiar names in there. And again, just uh, you know, promotional material. If the suspense doesn't kill you, something else will. I mean, now it's what a great tagline. Whenever they remake the movie or if they do the Netflix show or whatever they're planning to do, that needs to be the tagline. Just put, you know, Resident Evil Netflix or Resident Evil, you know, reboot, whatever the movie's called. And then just say, in the, if the suspense doesn't kill you, something else will. And just have a picture of a freaking zombie on it. And uh, your marketing will, will do the rest. It's, it's uh, really cool. It's a great tagline. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this to your attention, show it to you from this standpoint. Um, it's Sunday night, and you know I'm clearing off my desk, uh, desk. I'm starting to clean stuff up. I have my surgery tomorrow, and I had time for maybe one more video today, and I figured why not just record this so I can show you guys this comic book and get another Resident Evil video up there. Um, so thank you guys for doing that, and if you like this video, let me know in the comments because I have other comics too. I have, uh, let's see here, I have Resident Evil Fire and Ice trade paperback, so we can talk about that. And I also have uh, the Resident Evil magazines, which have short stories in them that are uh, take place from the games, uh, their interpretations of the games, the first two anyway, and then also side stories that take place between uh, the first two games, before the first game, and you know after the second game, even some of them. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below, and we'll cover more of this you know in a week or two uh, after I recover from my surgery. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.